What's going on, gentlemen? Today, we're going to touch on something that is the converse of what we do here. But stick with me. Smart guys are winning. To make some more sense of this, I'll give you context. When I was a kid, in my size, I've always been a big kid. Still is a big kid. It wasn't popular to be smart. You were mocked, you were teased. If you spoke English a certain way, it was a joke. Uh, people talked about you because you didn't use slang. Fast forward 20 something years, smart guys are winning like they never won before. Now, let's go ahead and go behind the scenes of big business in Fortune 2000, the White House, government, Pentagon. There's always been super smart guys in those roles. It's never changed. However, many of these guys kind of hit their smarts, unless they were in a room full of people who appreciated that. Now, if you are smart, intelligent, capable, that gives you alpha male status, where uh, 15, 20 years ago it didn't. You know, but once again, to parse this correctly, women were different back then. So you could be a smart guy, you could be loving and kind, and still get yourself a nice wife because the environment was so different. But now, very very different you have to not only use your smarts to get ahead in the business world but you have to use your smarts to deal and handle women now, I'm not talking about normal game I am talking about three-dimensional four-dimensional chess I put up a video the other day when I made a male revolt and I didn't really put into words that because I had enough data points, I saw her game coming. I knew exactly where her game was. I was just hoping to slide in because that was some nice pussy. But when it came to the facts, when it came to the reality, I let that pussy go. A lot of dudes would have not. And this is where being smart, being intelligent, and being capable is going to separate you from normal dudes. There is this, uh, like, let's take Colin Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick is more smart, more intelligent than his athletic ability. And I'll tell you why. He hasn't played in two years, but he's going to get paid. He's going to get paid all of that money he would have got paid if he had played, and he ain't taking those hits because he knew what they were going to do. They had a conspiracy. They intentionally held him out of the NFL, which is illegal. The owners got together and said, we're keeping Colin Kaepernick out of the NFL. So he's going to get his money because he's smart. Whereas someone less intellectually capable would have been out drinking themselves to death, um, talking all kinds of smack, because Colin, he's he's keeping it even. He's you know he's still doing his thing. He's collecting his awards because he know his payday is probably a few months or years away, but he's still going to get paid because he's smart. And this this is like the moves that I like to see. Let's take LeBron. Everyone thinks his greatest talent is his physical ability. Mm -mm. He is so, so smart. He took all of his boys and elevated them to multimillionaires because his click was smart. So you're starting to see this. Another place, music. Many of the new artists are not getting contracts. When I used to work in the hospital, I had the great pleasure of serving Curtis Mayfield, the real Curtis Mayfield. 
and he told me something because you know he was really really nice guy tell you anything he, he was just very warm and personal and I told him I wrote poetry and he said look whatever you do in the creative space never ever sell your work he said lease it rent it out but never give up your ownership rights of anything creative that you do and I took that to heart and that was some of the best advice I ever got well many of these new rappers, uh, musicians, they are foregoing the big payday. And I'll break it down to you because record contracts are very much like book publishing deals. They will give you an advance. They'll give you a big chunk of money, money right? Maybe a million, maybe two million. But unlike writers who get a, a, an advance, they don't really have to pay that back. And then once they earn out their advance, then they get more money. Well, it works a little differently for musicians because they get charged for videos, they get charged for uh, sets, they get charged for clothing, they get charged for jewelry. All that stuff comes out of their advance. So they got this million dollar advance, but because they have made, let's say they made 10 million, but because of all the cost, they take that money out to 10 million and the artist often doesn't get anything because it's like, oh, we're just paying back. So the, the biggest payday for many artists is that first advance. Whereas like Chance the Rapper, some other people, they're making money without the advance. And this kind of goes back to being in business. Let's see, I forget he's an R&B singer. I don't remember his name. If, I can, if it comes to me, I'll post it in the first comment. He and his team does about $35,000, $40,000 a month. Sounds impressive, because it is. Now, they go out, they hit these tour dates, they use Spotify to get data points and intel on, hey, well, we got a lot of people who are listening to this song in Philly, so we are gonna hit those listeners up going to target them and then we're going to have a concert in Philly right very very smart business now the thing is they're making 35 let's say 40 so they're making close to half a million a year with a small group and the artist is probably going to make 200k out of that because all these expenses and stuff now the artist maintains his records his rights, his copy, he maintains all of that, right? So in five years, this artist, he gets that million, plus if one of his songs really pops, Sir Mix-a-Lot has made over $100 million from Baby Got Back. One song. One. So in the future, when this guy, because I think he's in his 20s or early 30s, let's fast forward 25 years. Then they're like, hey, we want to use your song for a commercial. Bam, 25,000 here. Bam, this, bam, bam. Next thing you know, he's sitting on his ass. He's making more money sitting on his ass than he was performing because he maintained ownership. And this is what I love to love, love to see, that many men are getting very, very smart in business and money and you you've never seen anything like this uh, the late great sam cook was someone who did this sam cook owned his masters he owned all his rights and they killed him to get at his music because back then mr charlie was like well if you ain't gonna sell it to me for nothing i'm just gonna kill you and take it and that's what they did to sam cook but sam cook was one of the first was i think the first male black artist to own himself and he ended up dying because you know you ain't supposed to want to own yourself you ain't supposed to have dreams you ain't supposed to want to be the master of your destiny now many people are following that Sam Cooke template uh, many people are starting to explore because they realize that yes if I do all this hard work and this hard work and make a little money up front, 
the back end is wide open, whereas if you had a contract, the record company would get the majority of the back end. I had an artist. She was a songwriter. She was very personable. And I signed her to a contract, a very fair contract, 50-50. But I also didn't uh, play myself. I said that any song that comes through our joint collaboration, new songs. And I even put a clause in the contract saying any previously recorded work is off the table. And they and the girl, she was fine. She signed the contract. Then, like the next day, all hell broke loose because they realized that I wasn't some dummy because it, it was a gamble. Didn't know if this thing was gonna hit. I think it would have hit because I would have been behind the video because I was doing so many things. And then this is what they wanted to do. They wanted to rip up that contract and then we work while their team makes another one. I just walked away because if they're gonna be that dirty, I was open, I was honest, I was clear, transparent. But the fact is, if we had did something together based upon my intellectual property, my skill sets on making videos pop, I was gonna get paid. And you know, cause the thing is, it wouldn't have popped without me. But just to let you know, how people can be. So we didn't do the project. I went to Vid Summit and I ran into an attorney because I could have sued her, but what was I gonna get? She didn't have any money. It would have been like really stupid to do. Already then, that's interesting. But people across the board, especially young guys, are getting so smart and don't listen to your parents because you're doing the right thing. Don't listen to uh, folks who don't have any money because going back to the example of the r and I can hear his song, I just can't think of his name, that this guy is gonna make more money in one year from his cut than his parents or anyone in his family has made in four to 10 years. But these folks who have made no money don't know about business, they're trying to advise him and I, I just think it's a bad move. And I don't think he's listening to him. But right now, this is the greatest time in history to be a smart man. Now, smart comes in many different forms and fashions. Like Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne has sold something like 80 million records, right? Lil Wayne still got a tour because he signed one of those contracts. He wasn't smart. And part of this is, and I think some of these young artists, uh, these young creative people, they know what they're worth. Like me, I had not one, but two book deals offered to me and I turned both of them down. Uh, the first one was for $5,000, and the second one was for $10,000 in advance, right? But see, I was making more money on my own, and for me, and just to explain to those of you who don't know, when you get a book deal, you are selling, or you're wholesaling your book and the rights to that book to the publisher. So let's say it has a price of 20 bucks on the cover. Well, whoever buys that book is going to get it for 10 or if they got enough buying power, they're going to get it for $7. So your book is being wholesaled and then the retail distributor that buys that book is going to get 50%. So let's say they buy the book at seven and they sell it for 20. So they, they net out at 12 bucks and some change. That's how the game is played. So the publishing house out of that seven they get half, which leaves you 350. Oh, wait a minute, you got an attorney, you got an agent, so you're gonna get literally two bucks per book once your advance earns out. And this is how they give you an advance. The first is, advances are split into thirds. You 
get a third upon signing the contract, you get a third upon the submission of the manuscript, and you get another third upon the publishing of the book. And the publishing of the book could take anywhere from 10 months as fast up to a year and a half. So when they came at me, it was like 2010-ish. In 2011 is when I had that big, big year. So if I had signed that publishing contract because I wanted to be fancy, I wanted to be one of those people that go on talk shows and, oh, Glendon, oh, you do the story talks and, oh, tell us what it's about, right? I could have been that person. Uh, I could have lost well over a million dollars. So for those of you guys who are smart, who are creative in business and art, you need to own your work. You don't need to sell it because you can make some songs right now and they ain't hitting on nothing and then 10 years later someone's like man we need this beat and if you own that song they got to come through you to get it. This is why Marvin Gaye's family sued Pharrell and Robin Thicke and won because they stole that song. They had to pay them. So, you know, copyright is something that is very important, and a lot of people don't do it. I had some people try to steal my book because I had copyrighted it, and I went after them, and they had to change up their whole website because I was going to sue them. And that's one of the beauties of being a citizen of the United States is I copyright laws, I intellectual property laws. They are the best in the world. Know that. But many people don't know that because they ain't creating anything, they ain't building anything. But I want you guys to be proactive. I want you guys to build stuff. I want you guys to be creators. I want you guys to focus on building and creating because that is where the money is. You could create a new brand of underwear and get paid. You could create socks and get paid. Because everyone's like t-shirts, you can create purses. Uh, there's this chick whose name is Tori Birch. She's a women's wear, she's a fashion designer. And she sells some sandals for 200 bucks. But there's a little design thing in there where they really, they, they're like flip flops, but they're not because the girl slides are put in there. And they don't do that flip flop thing. They, they wear like shoes. She sells that for 200 bucks. I guarantee you that they're probably paying 10 to 20 bucks a pair, if that, to make these. So the money is in design, promotion, and branding. A lot of you guys want to start businesses, a lot of guys want to get into the game. I, I, my, my suggestion to you is to get started on what you can do today and then move up. I got started in resale. I got started watching, I got started selling stuff on eBay, selling stuff on Amazon. And, and this is the thing, when you're in business, doors will open for you that will never open for you when you're on the sidelines. Because if someone had told me years ago that I would be a full-time YouTuber, I would have laughed at them. But that door opened because I was in business. Doors are not going to open for you sitting on your ass. Open, wishing, trying to, quote, be efficient. You're seeing, because when you're smart, you don't have to be smart, if that makes sense. So just some thoughts, just some nuggets to know that smart guys across the board are winning like never before. So if you're smart, don't hide it. Don't be ashamed of it. Go forward. Walk in your smartness. Walk in your intellect. Walk in your with your brain. If you ace in the spelling test, keep acing it. If you are a, 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 a honor roll student, keep doing that. Because the future will be yours. And all of these non-smart people are going to be catching L's all day long. So with that, drop it off in the comments what you thought about this video. Let me know. And if you hadn't subscribed, be sure to subscribe. And share this video with someone you think needs to hear it.
today business school is in session. Learn how to make money, increase your wealth. One of the biggest problems I have is that people come to the YouTube channel, they'll see me and they want to get some, but they don't know where to start. So I have solved that problem today. If you're brand new, welcome. We're glad to have you. Look forward to serving you a long, long time. If you want to get this knowledge, if you want to start a business, I have created a blueprint, a roadway for you to actually start making changes in your life. Because this is one of the things that I have learned. When I was doing 30 days to 2,500, I learned that there were some people who did better than others. And I was like, why are these people doing better than other people? What's going on with these people? And what I have discovered, and let's see. Let me go ahead and hit that. What I've discovered is that people who came in with a business already, they did really well with 30 days to 2,500. Remarkably well. It was like mind blowing for some of them. Then there were people who didn't do well. And these were people who did not have a strong mindset or were not in business. So what I've des designed is for you to go through this pathway, because essentially when I get someone who's brand new to the channel and they've never had a business, there is so much work that has to be done. I mean, I know there's folks on the internet that makes owning the business, running the business look super easy, and it's not. And it's one of the most complicated things that you'll do in your life. But once again, people want the path of least resistance. That is not what we're going to have. So we're going to go here and we're going to go under. All right, so this is where you start. This is the uh, blueprint. First thing you're gonna do is get the hustler's mindset, pimping your mind for success. That's your free audio book. That's where you're gonna start getting that mind correct. Then you're gonna move to this. Money management's the basics of finance and wealth development. Before you get new money, you must optimize the money you already have. If you, as it was said in the part of the live stream this morning, if you don't manage a little bit of money well, you're not going to manage a lot of money well. It's the same person. The only thing that changes is the money. Look at the number of athletes who go broke because they've never learned how to manage money. They never learned how to compartmentalize, how to do the five checking account blueprint. They've not done that. So this is the, the first course you need. Now, I keep telling everybody that. I've had a lot of people who take this course and they booked a consult because they wanted to know more. So this is the course that you need. Then after that, we're going to go to the third course, becoming the boss. You have to make this mental shift about being into a producer mode. So this is the third course you will take. And one of the things that I've done is I've priced this stuff so well that, you know, there, there is a few of you who are kind of sitting back, who are emailing me like, hey, I want to buy these courses. What's the best price you can give me? That never works. Those deals never materialize because they were required for me to sit on email and go back and forth with people all day. And it just typically doesn't work out. Uh, the courses are so economical. All right, this is what you're going to get after becoming the boss. This will be your fourth course, uh, the Power of Six Productivity course. This course will help you get stuff 
done. This is a habit that you need to develop, how to manage your time, how to get stuff done. When you start a business, there's going to be so many things to do that this course will help you learn how to get stuff done, how to what's a priority, what's not priority. This course will do it for you. All right. So the fifth course you will get scripted days. This is a life changing course. I think it's too cheap, but I want you guys to benefit. It will give you the power of written manifestation. It will straighten out your uh, bad habits. It will put you on the path of productive success. It will teach you how to, you know, set up a morning ritual, set up an evening ritual. A lot of things. This will be the fifth course. Now, these five courses in the free audio book will build a foundation. When I was doing 30 Days to 2500, I had some students do amazingly well, and some students struggled. The people who did well already had A, a business, or B, a superior mindset. The foundational courses will give you the superior mindset. Let's say you're a person who wants to start a business but have no clue to where to start. This next section is for you. Typically, business success comes from practicing business skills. One of the best ways to do that is by reselling. You got to get your feet wet. This is where you will start with the reselling courses. Uh, this is a collection that gives you the storage auction book, the pimping Craigslist stuff, all of this stuff to get you geared for resell. How to have a great garage sale, all that. Now, once you've gotten the first five courses, your next move will be 30 days to 2,500. This course is for people who need to learn how to sell and how to sell and set up business. It will be thought provoking. This is also a good course for people with established businesses. Remember how I told you the people who had already businesses did extremely well. So go ahead. You know, if you have a business owner, if you go through because 30 days to 2,500 is a long course it's going to take you about two months to go through it but it'll be well worth it because in these two months you're going to learn stuff it's going to open up your eyes it's going to create new shifts in how you think and how you do business all right uh the seventh course will be asking for the money how to be an uber salesperson now, don't get this course unless you have something to sell. Just reading a book or reading a book about sales without having something to sell is a waste of time. You need to actually read about it and put this stuff into practice. And once again, uh, for all you folks who keep asking me about the Luponics book, I don't know the name. Can't remember the name of it. All I know is it had a red and black cover. Can't help you. People keep like, man, it sounds dope. What's the name? I don't know the name, man. I don't know the name. Just had to put that out there. All right. And for the business owners, this will be defined as people making money and paying their bills with the proceeds from the business. You know, if you got like a side business or something, and this might be for you, but this is for the business owners. You should get the art of holding on how to set up your legal structure. If you're a business owner making money, you are a target and you will need to protect yourself. Now, for the people who want to save some money, I have a curated bundle with all the courses except the art of holding to get you started and get your business aspirations. So this is the bundle that includes most of the courses. There you go. So if you are new to the channel and you're like, hey, where do I start? That's the pathway. That's the pathway to get started because from a foundational standpoint, you need to establish the foundation before you get off into trying to start your business. Because like I said, you know, I, I got a ton of feedback from 30 days to 2,500. And if I had been thinking, I would have did this like way sooner. But essentially taking those lessons derived from that course you got people who are not mentally prepared to start a business. It's, it doesn't mean that they can't become mentally prepared. It's just a process. It's going to take them a little time to 
you know, like you got kids, all kids don't learn at the same rate. You got some kids who learn slower and, but they can still get there. And essentially this is what you will be going through with the foundational courses. They will help you get your mind right. This will help you get your mind right. The DSL Chronicles, hell yeah, they ain't going to buy people. I mean, seriously, I, I, I pretty much ignore those folks because I've been down that path before. Typically, the people who are like, I want this course, I want this course, I want this course, and who want to talk to me, uh, the number one reason that people want to talk to me is to get permission to do what they think they want to do. This like, well, if Glendon thinks this is cool. No, you, you need to give yourself permission. You need to validate yourself you need to um believe in yourself mike ellie this ain't no theory this ain't no theory man these courses have come from my business experience there is no theory here Let's see. Anthony Johnson, me and my cousin got busy today. We had a hard time starting our generator. It wouldn't start for our mobile watch, but we strung it together. Made a hundred bucks for a few hours. See, once you go through this transformation, once you get that first good sale, that first load of money, it becomes addictive. It becomes very addictive. Now, what I'm going to do for the, you know, starting next week, there's going to be a lot of new training. So I'm going to do a video probably Sunday or Monday talking about the new training and how you can get a hold of that. Now, if you have never started a business, this stuff is good for you, especially 30 days to 2,500. And the money management course, I've heard, got a lot of feedback from that. People like it. It has helped them manage their finances because here's the thing. If you go ahead and start making a lot of money with your bad money management habits right now, it's the money's just you're not going to get the best use of the money. You you need to learn how to hold on to money. And this is what the course teaches you. So, you know, next week we will get into um the, the new stuff, but the new stuff will build on this. It won't be the same information. It'll be new information and more of it for business owners. I don't really have a lot of courses for business owners other than the art of holding maybe 30 days to 2,500 and asking for the sale. Those only courses for business owners. Uh, a lot of this stuff is side hustle stuff. Uh, beginning business person. So once again, just go ahead. You know, if you're brand new to the channel, you just found this. Welcome. Thank you. Appreciate you. Um, this is what we're going to do. Michael Gardner. So it's true. This guy I'm working for in real estate made like 15K and spent it all. People, that thirst, you know, that, that, that thirst is a big, big problem. That build up thirst of you wanting stuff, you want to live a certain lifestyle. Once again, the money management course will help you with that. Let's see where we are. Cool. Because what I, this is going to be a very short live stream because I'm going to take it down and I'm going to put it at the end of all the newer videos. So people who are coming into the fold, you know, the new folks, because I got a lot of new folks. I get, you know, emails and stuff like, hey, Glendon, man, I'm really excited. I like what you're saying. But where do I start? This is where you start. Okay. So all of the information is below. You can start with your first five foundational courses. Then start going wild on the other stuff. And very soon I will have some new 
information that will build on these principles that will take you to the next level. So with that, I will see you guys later.